A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Literally, good morning fellow mathematicians today. It's like 5 a.m. in the morning. Don't ask me why I'm recording videos already. Looking this fresh, 5 a.m. in the morning, but I do. Little PSA, don't forget to subscribe to my new channel, Flemmy's Wood. Only fans coming soon. Um, I'm doing woodworking over there, uh, doing DIY projects, etc. So definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel and to watch a few videos for the YouTube algorithm. You know, mathematicians need to work their wood too from time to time. Hence, I created this magnificent sounding channel. Also, I'm running a giveaway over there right now. You can win. DIY sets from Stemmerge EU over there. So make sure to check it out, link in the description. Thank you very much. Today we are going to take a look at this very problem. We want to find out what the value of the addition of these two nested radicals is. Rested nedicals, as I like to say. I, I think I misspelled this at some point in another nested radical video. So what is so special about this one right here? It's, it's not that it's hard or something, but you might notice that we got square roots of negative numbers here. This result has been first derived and it's answered by my boy Leibniz. It's in the sense kind of groundbreaking because back in the days like 2000 BC when, when Leibniz still lived, okay, they didn't have complex numbers around. So the square root of a negative number was still a very big deal. And he was able to figure this right here out using simple algebra. And this is what we are going to do today too. I don't know if this was the method that he used, but I'm going to show you how I solved it the first time around and then I'm going to show you another consequence, how you can find out the conjugate basically of what we got here or with a negative sign in between. And now we are going to get ahead and uh, go ahead and get started and I hope you are going to enjoy the video. So what I thought about at first is getting rid of the question mark. I hate when people write question marks in mathematics. This is just not good. It's, it's just not a good variable. Let's call this boy right here x. And what would be good is if we were to get rid of the square roots in some way. How you can get rid of square roots? By squaring, obviously. This way we can make use of the binomial theorem and we're going to get rid of the square roots, at least partly. Another cool thing about that is that what we have inside of the square roots, the arguments are actually conjugates from one another. So if we were to get rid of the square roots here, we would also get rid of the square root of negative 3 in the process, getting rid of these complex numbered boys. So let us square both sides and let's see what we are going to get if we were to square x. We are going to get x squared obviously. Then we are going to use the binomial theorem. Squaring the first term is going to give us 1 plus the square root of negative 3. Now this part squared is going to give us plus 1 minus the square root of negative 3. And as proposed a second ago, we are going to get rid of the square root of negative 3. This is good. And now we are going to multiply these two together, but we are going to get it two times. And since we have a plus in the middle, we are also going to get a positive sign here. So two times the square root of 1 plus the square root of negative 3 times the square root of um, 1 minus the square root of negative 3. Now here's the only thing if Leibniz did it this way which could um, give you a bunch of problems. Namely, the only thing we could really simplify is getting the success of 1 right here, 2. And also what would be good is if we were to take the square root of a times the square root of b and turn it into the square root of a times b. But we could run into a few problems here. Maybe you know about this shitty as <laughs> proof, you could say, fallacious proof that you find online a lot. Namely, what is negative 1? Negative 1 is the same as negative 1 but the square root of that squared, which is the same as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. But you know the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is the same as the square root of negative 1 times negative 1, giving you overall the square root of 1, which is the same as 1. So what we are saying is that negative 1 is equal to 1. The problem here is that what we are doing here is we are going to multiply arguments of square roots together which are both negative. This could lead to a bunch of problems and contradictions as you can see here. But if some part of our square root, one of the arguments, is positive, then it actually holds for all complex numbers um, 
excuse me if, if I'm wrong on, on this part here, but, but if the real and imaginary part are um, with different signs from one another, I believe, then you are able to multiply the arguments together. Um, please post your opinions down there in the comments. But in many cases, it does work out that we can multiply arguments together, especially when they are both positive. This is what you learn in school. But if you deal with squares of negative numbers, then you could run into problems. But we are just going to do it now for um, just um, heuristic purposes, you could say. We are going to multiply the arguments right here together, giving us overall that x squared is going to be equal. I mean, we get a success of 1, which is 2, plus 2 times. And now we are going to get the square root of 1 plus square root of negative 3 times 1 minus the square root of negative 3. Hey, this is good. That's the difference of two squares. This is nice. Now, difference of two squares tells us that we are going to square the first part. So 1 squared, which is nothing other than 1. Then we are going to get a negative sign in the middle. And then we are going to square our square root of negative 3, which is going to give us negative 3. I mean, 1 minus minus 3 is going to give us 4. And the square root of 4 is going to give us 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Doing two successive um, successes, you could say we are going to get 6. Meaning our x squared is equal to 6. And the only thing we need to do now is we are going to take the square root on both sides. But which square root, you might ask? Now. If we take a look at the original expression, what we are assuming here is that both thirds are positive. There are positive signs in front of our thirds, of our square roots. Meaning our solution is bound to be positive, at least in this problem. Meaning what we are going to get is that the answer to what we got up here, this nested radical, is square root of 6. Pretty good, right? Not, not too shabby. I really like this answer. I really like the thought process behind it. And it's, it's, it's just cool that the addition of these two nested radicals, including complex numbers, you could say, is going to end up with the square root of 6, a real number, which is pretty good. Now, I told you about the consequence before. And for this consequence, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at basically the, the conjugate or the, or the other branch, just with a different sign right here in the middle. We are going to say that there's also some y. And this y is going to be equal to the same thing, just with a negative sign in the middle. So square root of 1 plus the square root of negative 3, and then minus the square root of 1, minus the square root of negative 3. We could go through the same process that we did here and arrive at a certain solution, but what we could also do is we could multiply both of these equations together, giving us in the process. Okay, this right here is the second part, you could say, with a few consequences. That x times y, just solving a system of equations, is going to be equal to, hey, these are conjugates from one another, meaning we can make use of the difference of two squares again. Hey, this is good, difference of two squares, our good friend. Now, for difference of two squares, we are definitely going to get a negative sign in the middle somewhere, and we are just going to square these parts individually, giving us 1 plus the square root of negative 3, and then we are going to get um, negative 1 plus the square root of negative 3 giving us overall 1 and negative 1 is going to cancel out. I hope you can see the switch of signs because um, we are going to get negative sign in the middle for difference of the squares, which is going to give us 2 times the square root of negative 3. But 2 times the square root of negative 3, so 2 if we were to put this into square root terms, is going to give us the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 3. Now multiplying these two together and Remember what I said before, one part right here is positive, meaning we can actually multiply the, the arguments of the square roots together. We are going to get the square root of negative 12, and the square root of negative 12 is the same as the square root of negative 2 times 6. One part of the square root is positive yet again, giving us overall that this is the square root of negative 2 times the square root of 6. And now we can simply compare. We know that by our argument that we got right here, x is going to be equal to the square root of 6. Meaning the conjugate that we got right here, y equals to blah, 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 is actually a complex number. The square root of negative 2, or we should rather say i times at least one branch of i times the square root of 2. And yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> Just a little neat consequence that I still wanted to derive at the very end of the video. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, then you might as well enjoy the contents of today's sponsor, Brian. We're kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. They got some very cool online courses on complex numbers available on their website. And you should definitely make sure to check them out.
I said it a bunch of times here on this channel, too many times actually, but I can't stop to repeat myself. Brint is one of my most favorite websites ever and for a bunch of very good reasons at that. To give you a short and spicy introduction, Brint is an online learning platform and also app. You can learn something on the go while walking on the street. Don't look at your phone while walking on the street, but I think you get the point. With nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it mathematics, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, blah, blah, whatever you can think of in the STEM branch, even philosophy and other parts of non-STEM, you can find it over on Brilliant. And their course concept is also rather amazing and I haven't seen a course concept like this before. What you're going to do is if you pick a new topic, for example complex numbers, you're going to start off very slowly. You're going to start off with a bunch of reading, seeing what complex numbers actually are and then you suddenly find yourself in the situation where you are starting to build intuition for complex numbers. Probably geometric intuitions at first, but they are going to build it up into the group theory type of mathematics linear algebra type of mathematics and even more. Meaning it's going to get gradually harder, but you are not going to really notice that it's going to get harder because you have such a nice learning curve, such a non-steep one, which is going to give you such a great intuition for the mathematics, physics, etc. behind everything, that you are going to learn something new very fast and very intuitively. And all of their content uses highly interactive visuals that you can play around with to get an even better intuition for the topics that you are learning right now. So if you want to try it out, if you want to see how Brilliant works and if it would be something for you, then definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brilliant.org slash flamblemaths. With it you are going to get free access to a big portion of Brilliant already, but more importantly, the first 20 people to actually make use of the link get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a fantastic deal if you ask me, because they are adding new content each and every every month, brushing up on the old courses regularly, making them even better than they were before and it's just a, an overall good experience that you should try out for yourself. So make sure to try it out and support the channel this way. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel flag. Don't forget to check out Flemmy's Word too. You can find it over on my OnlyFans too to, um, for the giveaway and even more content from myself. And up until next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!